City of Eagle Pass 2022 Highlights As of December 31st, 2022, the bridge system has serviced a total of 3,417,000 crossings, including commercial vehicles, regular vehicles, buses, motorcycles, and pedestrian. Our port is ranked 35th overall and 10th amongst all land border crossings. A total of 28.45 billion in trade crossed through our port. Some of the completed projects include clean and paint project on bridge one and lane separation project on bridge number two at a cost of over $1 million. Some ongoing projects include the construction of a new administration building, design of a lane expansion, and the bidding for new toll system upgrades. Our Public Works Department reconstructed three miles of city streets, which includes Quarry Street, Concho Street, Ferry Street, and Eitzen Road. They also completed the expansion of the Sports Complex parking lot and drainage channel. Completed 20,875 square feet of sidewalks, including Flower Street, Bibb Street, and Veterans Boulevard. Repainted various school crosswalks throughout the city. Three cleanup campaigns were held with a total of 1,171 tons of trash collected. Solid Waste Department collected 39,000 tons of residential, commercial, and roll-off trash. Tire cleanup campaigns are held every third Saturday of each month. Our planning department, there were 92 new residential homes built in 2022. There were four new residential subdivisions with 128 lots. There were also five commercial projects. There was a total of 1,348 permits issued, which include commercial, industrial, and residential, with a total revenue of $556,000. The city of Eagle Pass continues to grow. Our HR department hired 123 employees. Our pay scale received an upgrade of a 7.5 cost of living adjustment. HR hosted multiple trainings, activities, and safety and wellness initiatives. HR also participated in five job fairs and hosted the very first career fair. Our public library held over 29 different groups and events with a total of 8,805 attendees. The summer program had a total of 1,386 and our crafts for seniors had a total of 517 attendees. Over 3,000 students attended the different storytelling events. Our library continues to offer ESL and SSL classes for our community. Our Economic Development Department had a total of three hotel project announcements, which includes the Hyatt Place, Home to Suites, and a dual hotel, which is the Hawthorne Suites and La Quinta. Over 30 million in private investment has been brought into our community. An EDA grant of $3.25 million was awarded for the extension of Patsy Wynn Boulevard, which will provide better infrastructure and bring more manufacturing businesses to our city along with well-paying jobs. $100,000 was made available by the City Council for the Business Improvement Grant with a targeted area including Del Rio Boulevard and El Indio Highway. Grants under the USDA Revolving Loan Fund Program were issued to Tintmasters, Hesless Trucking, and Intermix. The Medical Workforce Program 2.0 was initiated with the allocation of $270,000 from the American Rescue Plan funds. $80,000 was allocated for two years to recruit and retain three instructors for the program. On November 3rd, the first annual Medical Career Expo was held and over 400 high school students from EPISD Career and Technology Program attended the event. The focus was to have students learn more about the medical career pathways. On March 23rd, the first Best of EP Award Ceremony was held with 20 different categories. Over 500 people voted for their favorite businesses. The second annual Home to Texas Program End of Summer Internship event was held and honored the five UT Austin students that participated in the program. Our Main Street program had 12 businesses that started, expanded, or relocated to the Central Business District, which includes an announcement of a dual hotel. The Downtown Master Plan has been completed and approved by City Council. The City is currently in the process of implementing some of those projects such as the walkable alleyway system, courtesy of a $25,000 grant from Union Pacific and the construction of a central plaza. The restoration of the original Aztec Theater sign was completed and has contributed to the revitalization of the downtown historic district. 
the business assistance grant assisted a total of 14 businesses. The historic restoration program was launched with $200,000 and set aside funding to encourage historic restoration. A total of nine facade grants were issued with a total private investment of $134,000 and a total of $75,000 reimbursed to the nine grant recipients. Downtown block events were held such as the Dog Days of Summer and the first annual Fall Festival. The Downtown Holiday Window Decorating Contest had a total of 22 businesses participate and over 1,500 were submitted by the public. The Arts and Culture Center received the grants in the amount of $1,990 from the Governor's Office for the purchase of 10 keyboard stands and headphones, which allowed for us to expand the music piano keyboard lessons. Art exhibits continue to be held with the other events such as the popular sip and paint and children's art classes with multiple themes such as the Minions, Coco, and others. Our Parks and Recreation Department continues serving the community with multiple recreational leagues and tournaments at the Patsy Wynn Sports Complex and Luz Antonio Muñoz Gymnasium. Special events were held such as the LC's Power Hour Spooktacular Workouts, 5K Runs and Walks, Community Parades, and the first annual Winter Basketball Camp sponsored by Hibbit Sports. We also hosted the 4th of July Stars and Stripes Jam and Fireworks with over 20,000 people in attendance. Some important projects completed were the Patsy Wynn Sports Complex Splash Pad, Kelso Park All-Inclusive Playground, the new Burr Park Skate Modules, new perimeter fencing at the Aquatic Swim Center, and repairs to the press boxes at the Fort Duncan Fields and installation of new field fencing. Our fire department for the first time in many years has hired enough personnel to fill all their positions. Multiple grants were secured through the Governor's Office under the Border Zone Fire Department grant funding. $400,000 is to be used for overtime and equipment and $78,000 to purchase a new state-of-the-art airboat to be used for water rescues. The reconstruction of Fire Station Number 2 is near completion. The new station will have four bays and house six personnel per shift. New firefighting apparel along with new fire brush trucks have been purchased. Five firefighters have enrolled in a paramedic course at SWTJC. Eight firefighters have completed their fire certifications and five more are completing their coursework to obtain certification. The fire marshal's office performed over 356 inspections of new and current businesses along with 300 re-inspections. Our fire prevention program had a total of 4,000 students participate in their corresponding schools. Our police department had a total of 32,398 calls. A total of 10 civilian response to active shooter events classes were offered to the public. Four officers received intoxilizer certification. Three officers received their certification for active shooter instructors. Nine officers received their SWAT certification. The police department held national night out with over 1,000 people in attendance. Officers attended four career day events and hosted two car seat safety events. The mission of our emergency management department is to promote a safer, less vulnerable community with the ability to cope and recover from disasters. The emergency management specialist is responsible for the oversight of the EOC. Hyperreach, a mass notification system, is set to launch the first quarter of 2023. The city of Eagle Pass concluded the year with the Festival de Luces ceremony with over 1 million lights on display throughout the city of Eagle Pass. The Candy Cane Parade hosted over 20 different floats. Candy Cane Lane on Main Street took place in the 400 block of Main Street, bringing in families to the downtown area to experience the holiday spirit. Families were able to enjoy the delicious food, Christmas activities, and band performances that delighted the community with their Christmas performances and brought much joy to the spectators. The Legislative Days Committee held several meetings with the local entities and stakeholders to gather information and prepare our priorities for Legislative Days. Legislative Days were held on February 6th through the 8th, 2023 in Austin, Texas. These are some of the 2022 highlights for the City of Eagle Pass. Our city continues to move forward, 
and we are very excited for the many good things to come, such as the construction of the Downtown Business Incubator, the Hike and Bike Trail, and many others. Thank you.